Hello, and welcome back for another Ardenwood Presents webinar focused on questions and answers on Medicare for Christian Scientists. I'm John Mitchell, and I serve as Executive Director and CEO for Ardenwood here in San Francisco. I'm joined by our presenters, Jim, Katie, and Nancy, who are here today to answer your questions. Thank you for joining us. You know, Ardenwood supports the Ministry of Christian Science Nursing in our facility and the field through our visiting Christian Science Nurse Service and online events like this one. We also mentor Christian Science nurses throughout their training. As a 501c3 charitable nonprofit organization, Ardenwood depends on financial support to help provide the highest quality of uninterrupted care. Thank you for your thoughtful and generous contributions enabling this and our other programs. They make a real difference. Now let's talk about today's webinar on Medicare. Why is this information so important for a Christian scientist to know? Well, because it's a big help when it comes time to paying for skilled care. Skilled care is the kind of care someone would receive in a hospital and it's expensive. Hopefully one will never need skilled care, but in the event that you do, Medicare is an option for those who are 65 or over. We've all paid into Medicare throughout our working lives, paycheck by paycheck. So the funds are in place to be used if ever needed. And let me make a very important point here. There is no difference in the care you receive at Arden Wood if you're on Medicare or not. It's exactly the same care. Medicare simply helps you pay your bill. I also wanna emphasize the true wisdom of giving thought now to creating a personal care plan so that you or a loved one are prepared if there ever is a need for Christian Science Nursing Care. In that situation, you want, and we want, your focus to be on God, on healing, and not on your bill. Thinking through your options in advance, now, relieves anxiety and eliminates fear, yours and your loved ones. It's simply, it's that simple. So one other point that's essential and important to know, Medicare coverage is essential if you ever find yourself in a care setting that's not your first choice. It's good to have all of that in place. So Ardenwood is designated in federal law as a religious non-medical healthcare institution. We call that a rinky for short. And as a rinky, once again, a religious non-medical healthcare institution, Ardenwood is a Medicare Part A provider. One perception of Medicare is that it requires you to share too much information about your physical well being. As the payor, Medicare wants to ensure that the care received should be covered. That just makes sense. We have found that Medicare is much less intrusive than most insurance companies. Here's what Medicare expects from a rinky like Arden Wood a religious non medical healthcare institution or rinky furnishes non-medical items and services to inpatients on a 24-hour basis. That's what we do here. A rinky does not furnish on the basis of religious beliefs through its personnel, personnel or otherwise, medical items and services, including any, medic, any medical screening, examination, diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, or the administration of drugs for its patients. That's pretty clear language in the law. And that's what we do here. So we report only general information to Medicare because as you know, Christian science nurses do not diagnose or conduct any screening, examining or administering of drugs, which is consistent with the practice of Christian science and the law. Two final points before we begin. First, the content shared today is only informational and is not intended as legal advice. And second, a replay of this webinar will be available on our website in the next day or so. Replays of all of our webinars and programs are also on our website at ardenwood.org. And as a reminder, you can ask questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So now, 
Let me reintroduce our presenters. Jim Maher is a certified senior advisor and a broker consultant specializing in Medicare. He is also a certified long-term care insurance strategist. Jim has talked to thousands, literally thousands of Christian scientists since we started these webinars four years ago. And he's still here. That's really good, Jim. He is happy to answer questions about Medicare, long-term care insurance, and estate planning. Katie Burris is a Medicare specialist and certified long-term care consultant, helping individuals with their Medicare and long-term care planning strategies. Katie is a partner at McGrew & Maher Insurance Services and has been in the business for nearly two decades. She's, a li she's licensed to serve in several states for life insurance, long-term care, and Medicare. Jim and Katie are, treme are a tremendous blessing to our field. And from that, from what they both told me, they enjoy meeting and working with all of you. Phew. Okay, Nancy Sedan is our Director of Finance here at Arden Wood. And through her work with us, she has many years of experience with Medicare and other healthcare insurance policies. And we're grateful for Nancy. So let's get underway. Jim, Katie, and Nancy, I've got our first questions ready to go. Here's the first question. Part A lifetime reserves, excuse me, part A lifetime reserve days include what? Cumulative episodes? That's for Nancy. Well, um, that sort of begs a little bit more information before answering a specific, the specific question. Um, let's just review again what lifetime reserve days represent. Um, as a Medicare patient under Part A, uh, you have up to 90 days uh, for what they call an episode. Um, should your care need be longer than that, you do have an additional 60 days, um, which you can use once, once in your lifetime, an additional 60 days. That's your lifetime reserve. Um, and that, those 60 days could be used in several different years. Um, uh, so for instance, if somebody needed a care, uh, needed to have care in, in 2000, and they uh, went 95 days, uh, then five of those 60 uh, reserve days are used. And now they still have 55 that they could use another time during their life, um, should their care need extend over 90 days. So so those extra 60 days are, um, you can only use them once, um, but they can be used uh, at different times if you don't need the full 60 at any one time. I hope that answers the question. That's very helpful. And we've just noticed that Jim and Katie are frozen. Not really, oh. but they just logged off for a second. So we're gonna vamp for a net. Nancy, this calls for a commercial break. Can you <laughs> can you please tell us about a advanced healthcare directive and how important that is? And sure, how can... sure, Perfect. be happy to. Um, an advanced healthcare directive is a legal document that um, allows you to designate um, a loved one, a relative, a friend that uh, you trust to make healthcare decisions for you. Um, should you be in a position where you couldn't make them yourself. Um, and it's it's a document where you can make these decisions ahead of time um, and have a discussion perhaps with your family as to what would you, what were what are your wishes in terms of of care in um, certain needs when the, as they come up, were they to come up. Um, and so this document, um, which we have a, a a template, if you will, on our website at ardenwood.org, um, uh, it enables you to um, make these uh, decisions uh, for for yourself ahead of time and ask this individual to um, carry carry forth on those decisions uh, at a later point if needed. Um, it's a really helpful document also to have available um, with your loved ones, uh, perhaps in a PDF form uh, on their phone. Um, if you were ever um, admitted to a hospital um, uh, when you were out and about and you, you, that was not your first choice, but that's where your, your, your friends around you felt was the right thing to do, um, this healthcare directive allows them, uh, your, your appointed person, to um, 
be able to take you to, uh, say, Ardenwood or uh, another uh, rinky, should that have been what you have chosen in your um, uh, in your directive. So it's a it's a very useful document. Our our visiting nurse service um, has. Um, several individuals have left uh, their their healthcare directive with with them, so that they would know um, how to help in a time of need. And uh, it's just a very good part of this care plan that John was talking about that uh, you you might want to think through. Thank you, Nancy. That's so helpful. Uh, you know, just they sometimes will put it on their refrigerator because sometimes fire department folks or EMT people or whoever it might be called by a loved one or, or a neighbor, um, they would have easy access to that because I can't emphasize how important it is to have an advanced healthcare directive. And as Nancy mentioned, you can find it on our website, ardenwood.org. You can um, get a copy of one that you can adapt for either California, which is already in, mentions California or wherever you may live, but please consider getting that right away. Welcome back, Jim and, and Katie. You froze there yeah. for a minute. It was kind of oh, like a... technology. <laughs> there you go. Okay. We had to change our laptop, but we're good. Understood. <laughs> we understand these things. Is, is okay. it over? Are we done? Or did <laughs> yeah. we exactly. It? Okay. I Woo. saved the Went easy for questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks our next... Thanks for doing heavy lifting, Nancy. <laughs> our next question is, in the 2024 Medicare and You booklet, page 22... If Part A has no premium, a late enrolling penalty of 10% of what? So sit, wait a sec, Part Part A can, if it's not premium free, but 99.5% of everybody has premium free Part A. So, so that's really not. They're asking on the, the penalty, but the penalty doesn't oh. apply for Part A. Oh, so it, when we talk about that 10% penalty, we're referring to part B. It, it actually can't for part A, but yeah. but, it, but it's, we in 34 years, I think I've seen one, maybe, I can't remember. So yeah, part A is not the one you have to worry about. It's part B is in boy. That's the one you have to worry about. Great. Yes. And that's I, this is exactly why we're having these seminars, because it's a little confusing. Nancy, right. go ahead, please. I, I just happened to look at that page because this was uh, something I... Uh, also was not familiar with, as they just said. Um, I th I think that they're saying it's 10% of that monthly premium. Um, if you didn't, it did indeed um, have to pay a premium, as Jim said, you know, half of a percent of people need to do that. If um, even that, right. Yeah. It's a very, very low percentage. And then I think, uh, I think they only limit it to a couple of years, Nancy, or something like that on part A. Yeah, I, I don't right. have it in front of me, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says... For part A before, yeah, interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, great. Um, I was born before 1954. Can I purchase Plan F? I live in Michigan, so how much would it cost, and who would be the best provider? And I also have a Unum long-term care insurance plan. Okay, well, that's good on the last part, right? It's better than not having a plan at all. Uh, Cameron, is Michigan, do they still call it Plan F? Um, 47 states out there call it Plan F. Some states have a different name for it, whether it's mm. Michigan or Minnesota, Massachusetts, right, is different. We, we'd have to look up. Michigan but... has Plan F. Plan F, yeah. right. So, yeah, if you're born in 1954 or earlier, you can purchase Plan F. You can definitely do that. Cost is depending on your age. So it's hard to sit there and give you a quote. We would uh, You can email, email Katie or myself and we can send you the booklet that'll have both Plan F and Plan G in there, which may make more sense for you, quite honestly. And Unum, it's an old-time long-term care carrier, and I'm not sure if they have any type of Christian Science rider on those long-term care policies. Nancy, have you uh, have you heard they of that? They used to. Unum? I definitely they heard used that. used to? It's, yeah, okay. it's, it's out of Maine, I believe, isn't it? Unum out of, okay. originally out of the state of Maine. Yeah, yeah, so you would have to look, or, and John, we're getting a lot of questions on that. All you they have to do is call the 800 number. I would call Unum and just say, hey, I need a review. And I want to find out if I do have that Christian Science Rider on my long-term care policy. Right. They were popular in the late, in the 80s and then the 90s, I believe. Yeah. yeah. I haven't heard them from, for a long time, though. Okay. But if you had it as well, well, well planning ahead. Next up, do I need to have Part B to get the supplemental Plan G? Yes. 
<laughs> in a word, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you have to have both A and B to get yeah. the supplemental plan, correct. And and so just to go on from that, a lot of Christian scientists have been calling and saying, I don't have part B. And now's not the time they can add part B. They can add that starting in January, right, during this general enrollment period. Once they add part B on, then they would qualify to get the supplemental plan. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Perfect. I have an advantage plan HMO, and I want to go to a rinky or a religious non-medical healthcare institution like Garden Wood. Can I do that? It's an HM, H, excuse me. It's an HMO in Southern California. Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, an HMO is restricted to um, the providers in their network, um, and uh, none of our rinkies would be in that network. Um, so the, the short answer is um, it's not the best way to be able to receive care in a rinky. Um, uh, and so uh, original Medicare is... Uh, the best way to have that uh, option available to you. Um, that said, legally speaking, all Advantage plans are supposed to, are not, are required to provide all benefits that Original Medicare also provides. So technically speaking, you should be able to have coverage in a rinky if you're an Advantage plan. But realistically speaking, that doesn't um, uh, does not equate for two reasons. One, um, again, you're uh, an HMO or a PPO has a, um, a requirement that you have a pre-authorization, a visit to a doctor uh, to provide um, the 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 uh, the, uh, the, the referral ability, the <laughs> referral to provide care. Um, and of course, you wouldn't uh, be doing that. Um, and um, and as a result, um, when we try to admit someone who has an advantage plan, they don't have this pre-authorization and they don't want to get it. So that's a that's a big um, uh, hurdle in the beginning. And then at the end, when we um, try to go to bill an advantage plan, uh, once again, uh, we're not in the network. They don't know who we are. And um, and it takes um, a long time to even try to get um, a, a claim processed. Um, and frequently it, it, um, it involves appealing, uh, going through an appeal process to get their attention. So um, those are the negatives to uh, a Christian scientist um, having an advantage plan and wanting to come to a rinky. And then Nancy, um, to add to that, one other um, kind of component that I've seen when I talk to Christian scientists that have an HMO um, Medicare Advantage plan, they're having the issue too that when you sign up for that, they don't have a primary care physician, so they're assigned one. And then what happens is obviously they're not seeing the doctor. And over time, I've dealt with cases where Christian scientists are dropped by that doctor's office right. because yeah. they're not being seen. And because of liability, the doctor says, I can't have you as a showing on my books as a patient if you're not coming in. So when they need that referral, they don't even have a primary care physician that's even assigned to them to even help out anyways. And that's been an issue I've seen in, in quite a few cases right. lately, actually. Right. And now is the mm -hmm. time. Now is the time, because you're asking us a lot, that you can come off those plans. So if you want to go back to original Medicare, that you can do it between October 15th and December 7th. Uh, before you drop a plan, though, we always want to make sure you can qualify if you want to get a supplemental plan. But even to go back to original Medicare, if your goal is to have spiritual care, for example, at Arden Wood, uh, original Medicare is going to be the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can't just imagine we always we've talked about this before. Imagine you providing care to someone or like, for instance, Arden Wood, we provide care to a patient because the patient is in need and we don't get paid until a year or two later or if at all. Yeah. That's how difficult this is. So original Medicare is so much better um, for a Christian science care facility and um Anyway, it can't be under it can't be stated enough how important it is to get off of the 
of these uh, plans and, and get back to, onto original Medicare. And you have always said, Jim, you know, they talk about J Joe Namath or all these other celebrities. Right. You, you see the commercials all the time. Right, so, John. Yeah. yeah. And they have all the celebrities promoting these Medicare Advantage plans. And, and the selling point is, look, they're little or no cost and you get all these features and benefits. And it's better, you know, I think the selling point is that, well, it's better than nothing. And I think a lot of Christian scientists haven't bought that. They've been sold that without knowing anything about what a Christian scientist needs really are saying, well, this will work. This, this is better than nothing. A lot of times it can be worse than nothing, that they are really better off with original Medicare, quite honestly. But they make it so and they, they're running infomercials now. I mean, there's channels out there 24 seven because these plans are so profitable to the insurance companies. So they're promoting it to everybody as you should have it. And out of the, you know, I'll just keep going on, but I have about 65 million people now, more almost half now are going on to these Advantage plans because of the constant marketing and bombardment of these plans are great, zero premium, all these features. But again, as a Christian scientist, is that really getting you where you wanna go? Mm -hmm. right? Your ultimate purpose, is to receive care in a rinky like Arden Wood. That's not that's not the best plan for you. Thank you. Next up, I want to add part B as in boy, part B and will be 75 in December. I have part A. Can I do that now during the open enrollment period? How much of a fine will I have to pay? So when you don't have part B and it's been a while, um, then you have to wait for Medicare's general enrollment period. And that takes place from January 1st to March 31st. So at that time, you can add Part B. The fine or the penalty would be 10% for every 12 months that you should have had it and didn't. That doesn't mean it's 100% just because you're 75. It could be, and we see it very common, is that maybe you're 75, but what if you were on a group plan or covered by a spouse's group plan until you were 70? So if that's the case, you're looking at like five years or six years of penalty, not 10 years. Um, there is a form that you have to bring to Social Security when you're adding Part B in a case like that where you have to prove to them that you were on a group plan for a while. And we actually have a copy of that form that we can email over. Um, I just emailed that to a Christian scientist this morning, actually, so that if she decides to enroll in January, her penalty would be lower. Okay. So here's here's the silver lining. You haven't paid a Part B premium in 10 years, right? So if you go back and go 120 months and even $100 in average, I mean, you're ahead by maybe twelve thousand plus dollars, right? Maybe twelve to fifteen thousand dollars that you haven't paid in. So even though you're going to start paying some of that back, think of the savings you have now. And it's really important, I think, for Christian scientists to understand that you really do need to have Part B. Like if you have an accident or a spill or something like that, you know, at least Part B is going to pay eighty percent. You're going to pay twenty percent of a discounted Medicare rate. And that's better than paying, John, if you've seen bills from people going from an ambulance, if they have a bone sticking out on a bad fall into the emergency room, you're really talking, you know, you can see fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 bills. If you have at least Part B, you're only going to pay 20% of that after a deductible, 20%, and you're going to get a Medicare allowable rate instead of twelve grand, and maybe 10000 but it can only help you. So I tell people all the time, think of all the money you've saved by not having Part B. Even Now you just have to start giving some of it back. And we recommend having this supplement. But if your Part B premium is going to be so high because you haven't had it and financially adding the supplement doesn't make sense or isn't something that's feasible to do, then at least having Part B, you have right. that coverage. Yes. Yeah. Or some coverage. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. Great. Thank you. Good discussion. Next question. I live in Massachusetts and I have a basic plan. Will that cover me if I have a stay in a rinky? You, so, know, you know, we've, go ahead. I was going to say, we've had quite a few calls from Massachusetts. Massachusetts yeah. Quite a few. So Massachusetts has, it's referred to as the core plan. 
And that core plan does not cover like the part A deductible and stuff. And the part A deductible is what covers you in a rinky. So know that core plan is not what you want as a Christian scientist. Um, they have, they call it supplement one or supplement one A. Those are the, the options that you would want. Um, call us for something like that or email us right. for something like that. Because for most people, this means nothing. <laughs> right. And, and we've had a lot of calls on that. We yeah. Had one individual said, I bought the core plan specifically to cover me. And Ch I think it's Chestnut Hill back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, will it do that? And I said, it will, but you're going to have to come out of pocket. You know, if you're paying a premium for the core plan, you're better off buying what's equivalent to uh, plan G. What do they call it back there? Supplement Ma 1A. Supplement 1A in Mass. And this is for people in Massachusetts. So I would recommend if you have that core plan to at least look at moving to 1A. So yeah. if you're paying a premium, you're paying a little more, but at least you would have full coverage if you have care, whether it's uh, at a Christian science facility like uh, Chestnut Hill. This is helpful. So anybody from Massachusetts online, let's right. make sure we're listening to this later. Please call Jim and Katie or uh, follow this along because it is sounds like a little confusing. <laughs> Next question. How do I change my HMO type plan? I'm very healthy and only have it because it's a zero dollar premium. Is it wise to change to a plan G? So now is the time of year um, where you can drop your advantage plan, that, that HMO type plan. Um, and you have until December 15th is the deadline to request so, that be canceled. December 7th, I'm sorry. Um, and then that would be canceled effective December 31st. But before you just go and cancel anything, we would want to talk about adding plan G because you would have to answer health questions to get plan G. And normally what we would want to make sure is that you are approved for plan G before you drop the advantage plan. Right. And the other thing too, um, we've talked to quite a few that do have an advantage plan and they're paying zero premium, but they're getting a fine from the government because they never signed up for part D, the drug side, when they were first eligible. So they, that penalty would go away too. So that's something to consider also. Because if you went to original Medicare and as a Christian scientist, you don't need the Part D plan, prescription drug plan, that fine would go away. This is so helpful. Okay, next up. I have a long-term care plan that I purchased 23 years ago. It is supposed to have a Christian science facility rider. How do I know if that is still good? This is like the Unum question again. So, uh, <laughs> right. Well, and, and I've talked to a couple. I think one was Mutual of Omaha. I think the, right. I think Mutual of Omaha, John, used to have a Christian science writer. The yes. easiest way to do it is just to simply call the company and get confirmation. You know, they'll, you can call the customer service line and give them your policy number and say, I just want to make sure that I have that Christian science writer. And what they can do is they can confirm it and then they would be able to tell you, look on page 25 or whatever of your policy. Right. That's where it says. And if you don't have a copy of the policy, they can send you one. Right. I think sometimes they can email them to you yeah. now too. And they may charge you 25 bucks or something like that, but it's absolutely worth it. And um, some people have told us, well, they told me that I have this writer, but I don't see it anywhere. Um, that that can be an issue. You want to make sure it's part of that original contract, the long-term care policy. So again, you can call them and ask them to send you a copy of that that includes any endorsements like a Christian Science long-term care writer. Right. And interestingly enough, uh, I had a recent uh, experience with a, uh, a patient that also had um, one of these policies with a Christian Science writer. Um, that company was SHIP. Um, yeah, and... Uh, okay. Um, and, uh, I actually got to see the writer. Uh, they did, uh, request a copy of the policy that was sent to them and the wording was really wonderful. So, uh, if it's a 23 year old policy, you know, that wording may very well be there. Um, and, uh, it's, it's so, uh, effective. Um, of course, the other way to know if your plan is still good is if you've been paying the premium. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Next question. I have medic I have part A of Medicare. Does that cover me for a stay at Ardenwood? I fear I would I fear I would rather a large penalty to add part B. 
Do I need Part B? So I think um, uh, Jim and Katie have, have sort of answered this already, but I'll just reiterate that Part A is all that you need to provide um, care covered by Medicare at a rinky. Part A is all that you need. Um, and um, and they've mentioned before, there are certain circumstances where adding Part B at a later part in your experience uh, may be um, uh, expensive in terms of the premium and the penalty. Mm -hmm. Um, but remember that the benefit to adding Part B is that um, if you have both A and B, you can then have this supplemental policy um, so long as you qualify for that. So that, that's just a, um, a decision tree that you go through. But Part A is all that you need um, to provide, um, uh, to have Medicare pay for care at a, at a rinky. Thank you, Nancy. Did you notice some of these questions are repetitive, but I think it's sometimes right. helpful to reinforce uh, You're right, John, because we, we deal with it daily, but a lot of times people, you know, they hear us and they go, what was that again? And how does that apply to me? And is it something different that I missed? So, and we're happy to go over that. If people, you know, emails are great, we can try and respond to, but we do, I've realized we do it day in, out, day in, day out for a long, long time. But a lot of this is really a new concept. So we try to be very patient with everybody and say, okay, here's an option. Think about it, pray about it, and decide if that's right for you because just like Medicare, Christian scientists are individuals, right? They're individualistic and everybody has different needs. And I think that's the best way. Don't ever do anything rash, right? Right away, think about it, pray about it, and decide if that's something you should or should not do. Exactly. You keep mentioning asset-based long-term care. Would that help me pay for a stay at Arden Wood? If so, how much does a policy cost? I'm in very good health. Who would I contact? So um, asset-based care is a general term for insurance policies. Most of them are life insurance policies that also help cover long-term care. Um, most asset-based policies, at least the ones that we're using, they pay, it's called an indemnity benefit. It's a very fancy word of saying, they pay a cash benefit. That's what we like for Christian scientists because there's not fine print that says, we'll pay this long-term care benefit, but you have to use it here or there. That once you get the benefit, you get that cash. So you can go to Arden Wood. You can go, you can have a Christian science nurse or practitioner or get the care that you want. So we that's what we really tend to look for and lean towards. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as how much it costs, really dependent on your age and where you live and also the benefit that you want to receive from the policy. So it's kind of like saying how much does a car cost? Because it just depends on what kind of model are you looking for? What kind of make, you know, what do you want? What do you want it to accomplish? Um, and because it's so individualized, it's really dependent on each person individually um, and that's something that either Jim or myself can help with. Right. Perfect. What health questions would I have to answer to get a plan G? I have A and B only. I'm 71 and in very good health. I would like to apply for a policy. Good question. Right. Um, yeah, the health questions are normally major type issues, right? And Christian scientists aren't as familiar with a lot of the you know, the, the, the medical term and so we have to deal with. Basically, they want to know if you've seen a, a medical provider, right? A licensed medical provider for anything major like cancer, stroke, heart attacks, things like that that would prevent you from getting a policy. Uh, most of the Christian sciences we've dealt with, the answers are always no because they don't go see a licensed healthcare provider. So if you can answer no to most of those questions, general questions, you're eligible to get that supplemental plan. And it can be any month, right? Mm -hmm. It can be any month. You don't have to do it right now. You may decide in March or April or May that I think I want to try and get it then. Um, and even though, interestingly enough, that so Plan G is the same in 47 states, except for the three that are different. Um, the application and the health questions are slightly different in each state. Right. Um, so it's not like a blanket, like here are the health questions. But if it's something where you're going 
I want to see what plan G would cost. I want to know what the health questions are. Right. We do those on phone calls with people all day, every day, where we can ask you, here's the health questions. If you can answer no to all of them, here's right. what the rate would be. Um, and then see if that's something that you want to move forward with. Right. Perfect. Next question. I live in a rural area of Colorado and worry about staying in a rinky. What happens if I need assistance as I, as I age and can't get to Ardenwood? Would a supplemental plan help me? Boy, well, uh, that's <laughs> Nancy. Can you help on that one, Nancy? <laughs> good, good question. So, well, go ahead. Um, in that case, I think it's really dependent on, for that person, what does your care plan look like should you need care if you can't get to Ardenwood and you need, you know, Medicare level care? Um, do you have maybe adult children or family somewhere and that's where you would want to go and there's a rinky there? Um, it's just, it's really, really right. dependent. That's such a, like a personalized situation where what does your care look like? Would you, you know, as you start to maybe need more Christian science care, are you going to be relocating or are you going to stay, you know, I think Colorado. Where, right. So it just, that's a really unique and situation. So, yeah. <laughs> well, we've had several calls like that. It's like on the practical side of care, how do we get there? You know, that's a long flight. What do, what do we need to do? And so we usually mm -hmm. say, call Nancy. That's usually our answer, <laughs> right? That's what I do. That's, that's just that's just our go-to because we don't want to misadvise somebody if their sure. ultimate goal is exactly. to get to Arden Wood. Yeah. You, you can kind of... What's your take on that, Nancy? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, that's a great question. And and I guess um, I would just have to say that I, I have seen over the years how God works these things out. Um, uh, we have seen... Um, fellow church members drive someone from two different states away um, to be here. Wow. Um, nice. We've seen a, a dear friend arrange uh, a flight um, uh, for an individual that needed to get here. Um, we've seen uh, a visiting nurse from the local area accompany the, the patient. Um, it's very, very individual. And if, if in our heart of hearts, um, we really are desiring um, that care, then the Father opens the way. Um, and care isn't just at a facility. You know, sometimes a visiting nurse is uh, someone who can come and, and help, or maybe the family member is able to provide the care depending on the need. So care is, is all around us, and um, the right care um, uh, has has manifested itself in many ways. So I, I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Yes. And at the end, we do have a list of those um, religious non-medical healthcare institutions or rinkies like Ardenwood at the end to see what facilities around the United States um, have this available. Right. Great. Next question. How long can I stay at Ardenwood if I have a medic if I have Medicare and supplement plan G? Okay, I get this one, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the this can be answered in a variety of different ways. I think I'll just start with a very simple one, which is if you have um, Medicare Part A, B, and a supplemental plan, should your care needs require it, you could have coverage for a full year. Um, um, so this is... Um, seldom seen that somebody needs it for that long, but but that's what uh, what it is providing. Um, um, if you had, um, let's see, uh, let me get my notes here. Um, so, oh, so without the Medicare supplemental plan, if you just had part A and part B, um, and you hadn't used your lifetime reserve days in the past, then coverage would be 150 days. So, that's that sort of the, and again, of course, the Medicare pays only if your care need still qualifies for that. Exactly. So, yeah. That's really, it's not necessarily the whole stay, but for the Medicare covered portion of the stay. 
Okay. Right. Yeah. I think instead of thinking about the question of how long can I stay, it's it's right. how long would insurance cover? Uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you need to. <laughs> right. Right. Here's another Massachusetts person. I live in Massachusetts and I have the core plan. I was told this covers me for a stay in a rinky. Is that true? I can't find any information on that. Katie, I think that goes back to you. Yeah, oh. <laughs> we go back to the ask and answer. Um, core plan, that is not the plan that you would want. Um, and we actually have, because I've referenced it a lot lately, um, it seems like Massachusetts for whatever reason, um, I do have a handout that goes over the different plans. And it's like um, a spreadsheet that shows the different benefit levels for each of the plans. So if someone's looking for that, that they can see that we can get to them for sure. I think this was all came under before Obamacare. I mean, this was basically when Governor Romney, when then Governor Romney was Mes uh, governor of Massachusetts, they started that health care plan. So this is probably an outgrowth of that or continuation of that. Mm -hmm. um, next up, you seem to recommend the AARP UHC or United Healthcare Plans for the supplement plan G. Is there a reason why you think they are better than the other companies? I have plan K and not sure if I should switch or not. Okay, well, um, I don't think I've ever sold a plan K in 34 years, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, the reason that I, Katie and myself are really comfortable with AARP United Healthcare, uh, it's kind of insurance lingo, but they have the largest number of Medicare supplement policyholders. And insurance lingo, that means they can spread that risk over. They've got almost four and a half million people on their supplemental plans. So they can spread that risk over four and a half million people. If I have a company that's a smaller company that's less known and maybe has been selling, you know, I don't want to say they started a couple of years ago, but let's say they've been doing it for five or 10 years and maybe they have three or 400,000 people on their plans. If you have a couple of serious illnesses, that can really throw they have to go to the Department of Insurance and say, we need more help. We need a larger rate increase. So I'm just a big fan of AERP. They endorse, they only endorse United Healthcare. It sounds like I'm not doing a commercial for them, but I have them myself. So, um, but they really are good. We never have issues with them on claims. AERP only endorses United Healthcare, large numbers, lowest rate increases in the industry. And we just never seem to have issues with, with clients, right? We've been doing this a long time and they've just been outstanding. At the end of the day, any insurance company that we recommend is one where we have seen a good claim paying history from them. Right. And yeah. we have insurance companies that we have stopped working with for the opposite reason. Right. Um, and just because as an individual, the last thing that you want to do is pay each month for this policy. And then you have a claim and they're fighting you. So we always recommend companies that just like I said, yeah. they just do a good job of paying. Yeah, look at that. That's what they're supposed to do. Like, just do right. your job. <laughs> Mutual of Omaha, United of Omaha, great companies. They do a good job. United American down out of Texas. It depends on what states. But those are some long companies that have been doing a long time. They have a large block of business. So they're not going to see those, you know, hey, buy now, it's cheap. And then a few years from now, you're going, what did I get into? <laughs> yeah, totally. Next question. Is it better to have a low Medicare HMO type plan than just original Medicare? I have it because it's a $0 premium. Do you think mm -hmm. I should change? It's kind of a refrain here, isn't it? Right. A lot of these questions. Yeah. You know, if, if your goal is to receive spiritual care, then the answer would be, yeah, you should, you should think about changing. Um, I can't believe how many people we talked to. Again, I don't think they bought it. They were sold saying, look, it's zero premium, you get all these extra benefits now, and you should get it. And I think a lot of times they think something's better than nothing, and they just don't understand it well enough. They go, well, I do have coverage now, but if your ultimate goal is to go to Arden Wood, that's really not going to help you. And I think a lot of times um, something like that would really further um, a conversation with that individual because what is their ultimate care goal what right. what what is going to be practical for them what are they looking to achieve because in, in some instances a medicare advantage plan is best in a situation um but yeah it's just it's so right. individualized right. <laughs> right 
Oh, and listen, while we're on talking about that, you know how people get you like they show Joe Namath and William Shatner and Jimmy J.J. Walker. <laughs> hey, just call. Just call this number. A representative will call. Well, let me tell you what they do on these 800 numbers. You think that they're going to give it to Katie or myself and call somebody. That is not how it works. They sell these leads to large lead companies. So there are, there are agents out there buying these leads. If you go on there and you respond to that 800 number, you are going to get bombarded. But, you know, we see people getting six to 10 calls a day. They go, they don't stop there. They won't quit calling me. People go, well, I just wanted to see what it was. Don't do that because you go on a list and they sell those leads. Agents out there buy those leads and they're going to call you and say, you should work with me. And this is that zero premium plan. So do not do yourself a favor. Do not reply to those 800 numbers. It's not what you think it is. It's to, to me, it's deceptive marketing. You mean they're not your friend? Yeah, John. <laughs> well, they tell you they're your friend. <laughs> so you hang up on them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it, it's, oh, boy. Thank you. That's really helpful. <laughs> they're, they're bad, John. They really oh, are. That sounds horrible. Yeah. Next question. If I try and take a long-term care policy, do I need to have a physical or any other medical evaluations done? Um, normally, no. So it's dependent on the insurance company. Um, most of the insurance companies we work with, they they don't do that. They ask you health questions and normally like a cognitive assessment just to make sure that you're not having any memory issues. Right. right. Okay. More questions. I'm going to read these from the uh, the internet. So that's why I'm looking at them here. Is there an equivalent organization to the principal I'm assuming their principal foundation for Christian Science Practitioners Care. Nancy, not that I'm aware of. Um, not sure I'm understanding the question. Is that are they asking for another? I think, I think they're referring to the. Bills? Yeah, I think that there is. I know the principal foundation does have different things for Christian Science practitioners, different funds. But I think you have to have been in the journal for ten or fifteen years, and so on. It's probably best to call the Principal Foundation in um, in Kansas City or Kansas. I think they've moved out of the city, but um, I would call the, look up the Principal Foundation uh, website because they'll have different options. But other than that, I'm not aware of any um, finance options for practitioners. So um, if they're asking, um, is there support for a Christian science practitioner who needs care? Is, is is that the question? Because the Mother Church does also um, the Mother Church is as some well. support. For some that. support on occasion, not always. Um, yeah, I would call the Principal Foundation first. I think it's looking for funding for people who have probably been listed in the, in the Christian Science Journal for a number of years. Um, next question. At over 80, the 10% penalty since not having signed up for Part B at age 65 is going to be almost prohibitive. Do you have any suggestions, please? Yeah, because you're talking about 15 years, so that's 150% penalty on top of whatever the $174 a month it would be. So that would be pretty substantial. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to think of what they could do. I'm, I'm really not sure. I mean, that... I would say if adding Part B is cost prohibitive, and it probably would be at that point that you would just continue to go without Part B at that point. Yeah. On the other hand, you've saved that Part B premium from paying that for over 15 years, right? What's that? A, that's that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So you haven't paid that money. Hopefully you saved it somewhere, I hope. But um, mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's hard because it's so long. Right. Yeah, it is. that's a big penalty. Mm -hmm. Next up, if addresses on an advanced healthcare directive change, does the form need to be redone, Nancy? So you have an advanced healthcare directive and you've moved. You you went from one residence to the next. Does the form need to be redone? I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Um, I think it's always good to have an attorney, especially yeah. if you move into a different state, um, right. review the document because right. the one that we have on our website is um, specific California. to California. Um, so right. uh, I'm sorry, I'm more of the finance side than the legal side. So I'm not sure about that. 
I think that's pretty safe uh, advice, right? Um, we have clients that move and they have, if they have a living trust, right, that contains power of his attorney if, for, if you're not a Christian scientist, well, you can have it if you're a Christian scientist too, but we always recommend the same thing. You need to check with an attorney if you're moving to Tennessee or Idaho or New Jersey just to make sure that what you did in California is valid in that state. Doesn't mean you have to redo the whole thing, but it's probably worth paying someone a professional just to make sure that it's it's good in that state. Great. Next question. I have part A and part B, but not F or G. I'm born, I was born in 1953. I feel like I need F or G. What do I need to consider to determine if I truly need F or G? I'm in California. Thank you. Um, what we would talk about is one, the premium, um, and then look over kind of what it covers. And then two, especially when we're looking at plan F versus plan G, um, what we're seeing more and more is that the difference in premium between plan F and plan G can be $50 or more a month. Um, so if if it's $50 more a month to have plan F than plan G, that's quite a bit of money. <laughs> yes, that would be $600, $600. a year. Right. So, and the only difference between plan F and plan G is plan G next year has a deductible of $240 on the part B side, not on the part A side. So a lot of clients we have go with the plan G because they go, I can save a bunch of premium. And even if I happen to have to pay that part B premium, that $240, I'm still way ahead next yeah. year. I definitely think plan G for someone like that, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're going to net save 300, whatever it was, $360 on that, you should absolutely do plan G over F. Um, and we can get quotes for you. We can also help you apply if that's something you're looking at doing. Um, because it's dependent on not only your age, but also right. your home zip code in California. Right. How do you qualify for supplemental F or G? You have to answer the health questions, John. If you're beyond, so how it works, right? If you're, when you start your part A and part B, everything's based on your part B. The insurance companies give you a six month period to get any supplemental plan you want. Six months, it's called guaranteed issue. They must give it to you. Six months in a day, if you're going to seven month, that doesn't work like that. Now you have to answer the health questions to make sure that you can get that policy. So it's real simple. We can email the booklet, which we've done mm -hmm. hundreds of times, and you can just simply read those health questions. And if you answer no to them, we know that you can get the plan. It's that easy. Um, all of the health questions that are asked on the Medicare supplement applications start out with, have you been seen, treated, or provided medical advice by a medical professional? Right. And for a Christian scientist, it doesn't ma no. normally matter whatever the rest of the sentence is. Right. It's that caveat right there, they have not seen a medical professional, been treated, or in any way seen a medical professional. So all the rest of the question, it's always no, normally. And, you know, when I look at this question, I think they're also saying, what do I need to consider to determine if I truly need either of them? Right. Uh, you've That's been great. very helpful in determining right. which one is better. But right. um, maybe we need to reiterate again, if you don't have a Medicare supplemental policy, what it means is that you then um, uh, are exposed to paying the full deductible, the full coinsurance amounts. Um, and at, at Arden Wood with Part A, the coinsurance amounts are, um, or the deductible, sixteen hundred dollars for the first sixty days, and then it's um, it's four hundred dollars right now um, for uh, the next um, the sixty first to ninetieth day, and eight hundred dollars a day for those lifetime reserve sixty days. So those are the amounts that the having the Medicare supplemental policy would cover for you. And so you basically have to value or, you know, um, judge um, is the premium I'd be paying for that Medicare supplemental policy um, uh, what I want to do to cover that risk? Or would I want to self-fund later on if, if indeed I ever had a care need 
um, where I had to pay those coinsurance amounts. So right. that, and, that might be part of the consideration. I, I think that's a good point, Nancy. And just to further that on, remember Part B of Medicare. So if you have a, like John says, a tumble or a fall, right? And they take you by ambulance to set a bone or something, the emergency room, do an MRI or something expensive, right? You, you're, that's subject to that 20% as long as you have Part B. But there's no cap. Like a lot of people are used to health plans under 65 health plans, and it's called an out-of-pocket maximum, meaning I'm going to, I can never pay more than $5,000 or $6,000. That's the most I'm going to pay. Original Medicare, Part B, there is no cap on that. There's 20%. And if you're paying, there is no limit for every year. So I always tell people, you think about that too. You know, you want to protect your, your assets, your family too. So take that into consideration. Absolutely. Great answer. I live and work in Ohio now, but hope to move to Massachusetts in retirement. Would I run into trouble with Medicare coverage moving out of state, Massachusetts in particular, eventually? No. The answer is no. Med Medicare goes wherever you go, right? So it's in all 50 states. And I know in Massachusetts, right, you'd have no trouble at all if you have a plan, supplemental plan in Ohio, and you move to Massachusetts, you're simply, it's going to change, right? Yeah. So if you start change. in Ohio, and let's say you do plan G, because that's what we talk about all the time. Then when you move to Massachusetts, they don't have plan G, but they have an equivalent of that. So you could be on plan G in Ohio and then switch to Massachusetts equivalent when you right. move there. And you don't answer any health questions in Massachusetts, right? You can right. automatically get the plan. Yep. So... Next up, this is a little more complicated. Could you compare AARP, Anthem Blue Cross, and Blue Shield? We currently have Anthem Blue Cross, but I am a Christian scientist and my husband is not. Currently he has a doctor, but I do not. The doctor I had was friendly to Christian science, but I did not see him often and did not go into the office during COVID. So I did not get the plan that they required at Sutter Health. I don't know what I should do now. My son thinks I should get a, another physician, a doctor of osteo osteopathy. D-O, I don't know what that is. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> right. Maybe um, that's one to call you or I don't know. Maybe one to call us. us. Yeah, because I um, my mom said, if you don't have anything nice to say about companies, don't say anything at all. <laughs> so I'm not um, going to say anything negative about that. I will, the, the, as close as I will get to saying is there is one of those companies that we don't deal with because we've seen claim issues. Well, it's not, um, name. we don't want to say any names. No, though, but right. what I would say is that it would be really important to look at, especially because Medicare supplement plans, plan G is the same with one company as it is with another. So if you have plan G with company DEF and company, you know, XYZ has the same plan, but it's $40 lower and they still do a good job of paying claims, then it makes sense to, to move to that plan. Um, I didn't catch whether they said a supplement or not. So I, I think in that no, case, okay. a phone call would be really good. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Please call. Jim and Katie on that question. That's a good question. And you'll have their number at the end of this program today. Next question. The National Foundation for Christian Science Nursing assists both Christian Science nurses and practitioners that are journal listed. Yes, that is a true, a true statement. There is no question here. I guess it's just they're just making that statement. The National Fund for Christian Science Nursing comes through... Um, the principal foundation in the Kansas City area. Next question. Could you speak to the activity of the Christian Science Provider Network? What do they do relative to Medicare or other insurance companies? When would one use their services? And is there a payment required to use them? Nancy. Oh, what a great question. Um, great the question. Christian Science Provider Network is a wonderful um organization. It was originally set up by the Mother Church, um, and its purpose was to provide um, the support to Christian Science nursing organizations, such as Ardenwood and other, uh, other facilities throughout the country, um, 
with regards to interacting with insurance, um, among other things. Um, for instance, you heard me mention about appeals that we had to um, do with Medicare Advantage plans. Well, it was the Christian Science Provider Network that um, authored uh, the letters to these appeals and uh, had the legal legalese, if you will, um, to uh, help make the point that um, the claim should be paid. Um, and these are dedicated Christian scientists who are constantly praying through each one of these activities and the results are amazing. Um, I, I've had the honor of working with them for um, the last many years and uh, I'm just entirely grateful every time I'm interacting with them. Um, let's see, uh, the specific question though was, um, what do they do relative to Medicare or other insurance companies? So um, uh, they, they work in tandem with um, the Committee on Publication with regards to um, addressing Medicare issues. Um, and um, uh, there is support there, the Committee on Publication takes the lead, um, but there is support there if there is uh, there, there are a way to gather information that is helpful to the Committee on Publication to make uh, cases if, um, if there's something that needs to be brought to the government's attention. Um, and are there, is there a payment required to use them? No, no, they are a nonprofit. And, um, so they also are available for, um, uh, insurance questions, but they're not brokers like Jim and Katie are. So it wouldn't be that kind of a question. But for instance, we had an instance where, um, an individual was covered by Medicare and their family wanted them to have a COVID vaccination. Um, while they were covered by, by, by Medicare. And to uh, make a long story short, Medicare revoked their benefit because of this COVID uh, vaccination, uh, saying that they'd went the medical route and, and the benefit was no longer available. Well, um, this wasn't fair and wasn't a right idea. And um, so this family, individual family, did go to the provider network um, as one of their their avenues for um, getting this addressed, and um, and through the Christian Science Provider Network and the Committee on Publication, this actually uh, was overturned in the government, um, and a new law, law was was federal law was put in place. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's um, um, I can't say enough about them. But anyway, so I hope that uh, is helpful. But uh, Jim and Katie are the ones that or that we, we certainly love working with if on your individual basis. But if there's a, a higher level type of a question or issue, the provider network is is certainly a, a good resource. And it really, as I mentioned earlier, it helps. Full disclosure, I serve on the board of the Christian Science Provider Network. So um, it really is an outstanding organization. And it does help make sure that uh, nursing facilities, Christian Science nursing facilities like Ardenwood or others. Um, some, most are in uh, those that are rinkies like Ardenwood, but also those that accept insurance. Sometimes it's very difficult, as said we said earlier, to get paid. And they can navigate through these very complex and very large organizations or insurance companies, um, or Medicare as stated, um, and they know what to do, how to do it, and prayerfully go through it. Because And sometimes these reimbursements to places like Arden Wood can take years, but they, they keep working at it. And you've got to realize that most of these, like Medicare, I mean, they serve tens of millions of people daily. The Christian science part of healthcare system is infinitely small. So you're looking at 100 claims, 200 claims a year, as opposed to millions a day. So you can see where it helps to have someone with expertise navigate getting paid through an insurance company or through Medicare. So very helpful, um, just an outstanding organization. So hopefully, if you did receive a mailing from Arden Wood, um, it explains it in more detail as well. But you can go to the the Christian Science Provider Network um, website as well. And that will be listed at the end. Next question. Um, here's kind of a good question, or it is a good question. It's just a general question. Do these premiums keep going up? 
Um, so the premiums do go up every year as you age. Um, but each insurance company has a different age kind of at which they cap that. Um, AARP is 77. Um, some other insurance companies are 85. I've seen some go all the way up to 99. Um, but mm. in California, California is one of a handful of states that has what's referred to as the 30 day birthday rule. So if someone like Jim has a Medicare supplement plan G, then every year within 30 days of his birthday, he can look at switching from his company to another company, um, another company's plan G and possibly save himself money. So you do have kind of that protection in California. Great. Um, I'm just asking a question of our support team for the next question. Um, thank you for that, Katie. Um, where on our website is the is the AHCD or the Advanced Healthcare Planning Form? It is on our website at ardenwood.org. And I'm just quickly asking, do you know where it is? It actually appears on sure. um, our website. Yeah, Nancy, let me can just you go there look at quick. that? Mm -hmm. um, Real time answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we are yeah. full service. We just have a couple more questions, so we're just about at the end of our time. It's five oh six, right? And gosh, it's getting dark so early now, isn't it? Yes, it yeah, is. yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? Okay, I mean it's so... not seven o'clock yet. <laughs> it looks like it outside. It does. So on the 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 home page, um, if you scroll down, there are three pictures in the middle. Ardenwood.org. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Ardenwood.org. And in the, the center picture, it says, join us, watch a replay. You'll see at the very, there are, are several links. Um, at the bottom of that is Advanced Healthcare Directive PDF. That's the fastest way to get there. Um, it is also listed under, um, uh, yeah, down at the very bottom, healthcare documents. If you scroll to the very bottom exactly, of the home page. Um, you can see healthcare documents on the left-hand side there and click on that. So those are the the two quick links to, to it. Thank you, Nancy. And here's our last question. Um, if a Christian science care facility is not on the Rinky list or religious non-medical healthcare institution list, you provide at the end of this webinar, um, Lynn House in Virginia, for example, is not, does it accept Medicare Part A? If not, does a patient just pay out of pocket or through another insurance policy? I live in Southern California, excuse me, South Carolina, excuse me, I live in South Carolina. Um, you can only use your Medicare benefits at a rinky. So um, if you choose to go to a facility, a Christian Science Nursing facility that does not have Medicare, then yes, it is private pay. And um, and so that means you um, you need to pay from your own um, uh, savings. Exactly right. Well, thank you, Jim, Katie, and Nancy. And thanks to all for you, to you for your on online and to be watching this later. For your good questions, you can see how important these seminars are because the webinars are because the, the, com the questions are complex and not always easy to, to understand. Mm -hmm. So please don't hesitate to call any of the three here, Nancy or Katie or Jim, at any time. We're all they're all happy to help. And one of the resources you're welcome to contact once again is the Christian Science Provider Network, which works directly with Medicare on the behalf of Christian Scientist care facilities, as well as individual Christian Scientists. The, the uh, address is csprovidernetwork.org, csprovidernetwork, all one word, dot org. You may have received, as I mentioned earlier, an e-letter, an electronic letter about the network in the last week or so. Another resource for financial assistance available to all Christian Scientists in all ages is the National Fund for Christian Science Nursing, or NFCSN. The contact information for these resources is listed at the end of the webinar as well. Again, the point is that it's wise to be thinking through your options now. So thank you for taking the time to watch this and to do that. 
And finally, before we go, I want to invite you to attend our annual Christmas celebration coming up on Sunday, December 3rd at 2 p.m. Pacific time. You'll receive an email invitation in early November, and you can register for all of our events on our website, ardenwood.org. In the meantime, wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving coming up soon. And thank you again for joining us today. And goodbye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.